Hi everyone and welcome to the first episode of the second season of Casper's DAP Developer Series. In this season, I'll be forgoing the traditional method of writing Casper smart contracts, using the Casper contract Rust crate in favor of the newly released Odra framework. Odra is a new smart contract development framework created in collaboration with the Casper Association. Odra makes writing smart contracts on Casper much easier. It has an object-oriented feel, and abstracts away a lot of monotonous tasks that allow you to focus solely on manipulating contract data. Also in this season, I'll be using new tools like CSPR Click and CSPR Cloud, produced by Casper's partner Make Solutions, to make DAP development much more streamlined, effectual, and safe. Lastly, this season will make use of new tools created under the guidance of the Casper Accelerate Grant Program. In this first episode, I'll introduce you to the Odra framework. We'll write a simple smart contract, write tests for it, execute those tests, build the contract, and deploy it to the Casper testnet. If you haven't seen Season 1 of the DAP Developer Series, I highly recommend watching those videos first so you understand how Casper smart contracts work on a lower level. However, it is not required for you to follow along with these videos. Before starting, though, you should at least read the documentation at docs.casper.network as there are some prerequisites and dependencies that you may not be familiar with or may not have installed. Let's jump right in. The first thing we need to do is install Odra using the Rust Cargo Package Manager. So open up a new terminal window and add the Rust compilation target wasm32 unknown unknown, which is the target that our smart contracts will compile to. Now you can install Cargo Odra, which is a command line tool used to build and test Odra smart contracts. Just run cargo install cargo Odra and use the locked flag to use the cargo.lock file. Now head to the directory you'd like your project stored. I'll start from the home directory. For our first Odra project, we'll create a contract named Flipper that simply stores a Boolean value and exposes a public entry point that flips that value. To create this new project, execute the command cargo Odra new, give it a name, and specify a template. We'll use the blank template. Open the new project in an editor. I'll be using VS Code. Create a new file flipper.rs in the src directory. Now open lib.rs and uncomment line number 5, replace my contract with flipper, and save. Start by importing all the objects from Odra Prelude. This includes a variety of modules, macros, structs, and more that we can use in development. Then import the var type from Odra, which can be used to store single values on the blockchain. This data structure has getters and setters for reading and storing simple values. From here we can declare a sort of contract interface. We create a new module that consists of the objects stored in the contract. In this contract we'll just have one object named value, which is a boolean. It's also important to annotate the struct with the odra module attribute. Now we can implement the module and create entry points. Start by opening an implementation block annotated with the odra module attribute. When writing Casper smart contracts using the Casper contract crate, like what was used in Season 1 of the DAP Developer Series, the constructor of a contract was always named call. With Odra, you use the function name init for the constructor, which is called only once upon deployment of the contract. Create the constructor like so. The reference to self is needed in order to access objects defined in the module definition. If made a mutable reference, those objects can also be mutated. Our case will use a mutable reference to self and mutate the object value. We set our value initially to false and that's all we need to do for the constructor. Creating another entry point is as simple as declaring a new public function in the module implementation. Our next entry point will be used to set the value variable as either true or false. So simply create a new public function named set that accepts an argument value. And within this function, set self.value to value. You can also create an entry point flip that sets the value to the opposite of whatever it is currently. The method get or default will return the value set here, or if it was never initialized, will return the default value, which for a Boolean would just be false. But you can also use just get, which returns an option, and then you can unwrap that option. Finally, let's create a getter entry point that returns the Boolean value stored in self.value. This can be used in testing or by other contracts that may want to retrieve the value. Note that there's no semicolon here, so this value is returned. Our flipper contract is now complete. That's all we need to do. 
Here's what it would look like if we use Casper Contract instead of Odra. As you can see, Odra makes smart contract development on Casper much simpler. Let's now write a test that can be run to ensure that the contract works as expected. Open a new module tests, annotated with Rust's CFG test attribute, which will only compile and run the code when cargo test is executed. Odra creates what it calls a host reference when a new Odra module is defined. This object can be used in test modules to refer to contract objects like entry points. Import this object like so. Host references are generated by Odra using the syntax of the module name followed by host ref. Now we need a couple Odra traits. Import deployer, which is implemented by the host ref to be able to deploy the contract. Also import no args, which is the default implementation of the runtime arguments object used when deploying the contract. We will use the no args as the flipper contract doesn't accept any runtime arguments on installation. You can create your first test by creating a new function annotated with the test attribute. First, create a new environment instance like so. This object is used to access the testing environment, allowing you to obtain information about the blockchain or to use when deploying a contract or calling an entry point. From here, you can deploy the contract to the test environment. Use the deploy function provided by the deployer trait on the flipper host ref object and provide a reference to the environment for the first argument and no args as the runtime arguments. The contract object must be mutable so we can modify values within the contract. If we didn't need to change the value of value within our tests, we wouldn't need it to be mutable. We can begin actually testing by using the Rust assert macro to verify that the initial value of the value variable is indeed false. Contract.get should return false, but assert will only succeed if the value provided is true. So use a bang to flip the value of contract.get. Now flip the value on the contract itself using contract.flip. This should make the value stored in the contract true, so we can now assert that the value is indeed true and no longer false. And that's it for our test function. If you'd like to practice, try writing another test that uses the set entry point. Before the test can be executed or the contract can be built, the path to the contract needs to be defined in odra.toml. So open up odra.toml and uncomment the contracts array, and the value beneath it. The FQN object is the fully qualified name of the contract and is the file name of the contract, followed by the name of the Odra module. Now to perform the test, make sure both of your files are saved, head back to your terminal, move into the directory, and run cargo Odra test. Now you should see one passed. We now assume that the contract works as expected, so let's compile it and deploy it to the Casper network. To compile it, simply run cargo odra build. For whatever reason, the wasm32 unknown unknown target is not present, so I can install it just by running this here. And we rerun cargo odra build. All right, we should have an optimized wasm contract in the wasm directory. You'll need a private key from which to deploy the contract. You can create a new key pair by running Casper client key gen and the directory, I'll say keys. This account will need to be funded with Testnet CSPR. If you're unfamiliar with how to fund a Casper account with the faucet, see video three of season one of the Casper DAP developer series linked in the card above. To deploy the contract, use the Casper client put deploy command with the following arguments. First, provide a node address. This is a public node address that's available for your use. Then specify the chain name. Since we'll be using the Casper testnet, we'll just use Casper test. Then we need the path to the secret key. Ours is in keys slash secret key dot pem. And the path to the wasm file is in wasm slash flipper dot wasm. Next is the gas payment, which is 100 billion motes or 100 CSPR. Finally, we need three session arguments, which are specific to Odra. The first one is the contract package hash name that'll be stored in the named keys of the deploying account. I'll use flipper contract package hash. Next is the Odra named key override allowance, which I'll set to true. 
This will replace the existing key under the name Flipper Contract Package Hash if it exists on the account, but since this is a fresh account, it doesn't matter. The last session argument is the Odra is upgradable flag. If this is true, the contract is upgradable. If it's false, then the contract is locked. Let's deploy the contract and track the status on testnet.cspr.live. The deployment succeeded, so we can head to the deploying account, go to named keys, and see that the named key flipper contract package hash matches that in our put deploy command. We can also go to the contract package hash, go to versions, click on the version, and take a look at the entry points. We have flip, get, init, and set. That's it for this video. In episode two, we'll connect this contract to a website we build using React and CSPR Click. If you enjoyed, be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.